Good morning, everybody. Brian of London here. Don't you like the washed out white background? You have no idea where I am. Oh, yes. To <laughs> yesterday, uh, Tommy released a video uh, based on his Sky News interview, his one hour, 15 minute sit down with Sky News that he knew would be a hatchet job. And uh, true to form, it was. Uh, it, they did exactly what you expect from these people. They completely took words from the interview, changed them, put them in the headline, and, and that went all around the world. But I just want to come back with some around the side. You have to see Tommy's video because he explains it perfectly. And Sky News said, uh, presented it as if he said something terrible and he didn't. They took it out of context. They had to edit. They had to change the order of the clips. They had to add in a voiceover. So they had to pose a question that was not posed during the interview as a voiceover over other pictures so that they could um, twist what he said. All he did was he said that a video produced by the Dutch was a good idea. A video warning children to be on the lookout for gangs of men who patrol near schools and try to entice them into cars uh, with offers of food, alcohol, drugs, that eventually leads to them being sex slaves. He said that producing a video like that is a good idea. And they managed to twist that. Anyway, the thing I just wanted to raise quickly this morning was that I've been looking back through Sky News's, um, I've been looking back through Sky News's YouTube feed. Now, obviously, Sky News is a huge global audience of people who have it on the, in the background and are not paying much attention to it. It's on in hotels. It's like CNN. It's on a, probably at airports and all that crap. But their YouTube feed, what people actually go looking for, contains many clips. They, they take many of their short reports, put them on as YouTube clips. They all get about one and a half thousand views. In fact, my videos on YouTube get about a little less. Sometimes my videos are bigger hits. But the only two topics, they, well, actually, there's three um, topics and one interview that are getting high numbers of hits on their YouTube channel right now. One is an exclusive interview with Boris Johnson. That gets about 11,000. He's the former Foreign Secretary of Great Britain. So 11,000 views so far he's had for that. Uh, Sky News have had for his interview. Then anything to do with Brett Kavanaugh and the... Uh, uh, the Supreme Court of America, those are getting high numbers of viewerships. But the highest viewed clip on Sky News's YouTube page right now is their nine minute hit piece against Tommy. And the ratio of likes to dislikes is out of control. It's like 10,000 dislikes and a couple of hundred up likes. Um, and it's had 140,000 views. So obviously, only reason that clip is popular and the most popular clip on uh, Sky News's YouTube page in uh, in the recent history is because it is Tommy and it's being viewed not by people sympathetic to Sky News's position on this. It's only being viewed, in fact, because Tommy has made an issue of it. Um, meanwhile, Tommy's clip exposing this it has had close to the same number of likes, uh, views on YouTube and a huge number on Facebook, even though I know Facebook inflates views beyond all reasonable point. It's still the point I'm making is that Sky News's audience, most of them don't care very much. But Tommy's audience all care deeply. And the crossover is good, even though it's a hit piece and um, it does damage Tommy. And the main way it damage damages Tommy is that it goes out into the main mainstream news. They just report the allegation that the false quote that Sky News created and had to change words, they report that, the other newspapers report that, it goes down in his record. Now, is that gonna um, affect Tommy's current court case? Well, if there was a jury, yes, this would be prejudicial. This would be a lie that's prejudicial to an upcoming case. Wow they'd be in trouble. The trouble is here um, in this particular case, 
it's only a judge, and judges are supposed to be a beyond prejudice. Ha! Like the one who sent him to prison from Leeds, Marsden, Marsden, or whatever his name is. Um, the, there's just no way, uh, there's no way you're allowed to assume that a judge could be prejudiced by something as stupid as the, um, uh, as Sky News, well, which of course we know they are. And so that lie in Sky has gone all around the world. I think Solzhen, was it Solzhenitsyn said, nobody reads my books, everybody just quotes one bit and everybody quotes the journalist. One journalist quotes me and everybody reports what the, the uh, what that journalist misquoted. And that's exactly what's happened this time. Is there legal recourse for Tommy? Suing for this kind of stuff is bitterly difficult and expensive in the in the UK system. And that's a big problem. That should be it should be easier for normal people to sue the press in Britain because they lie all the time. And hopefully those of you who are sort of new to following Tommy, this is something that you will take as a point of, of interest here. How easy they lie, how well, how, how just the, 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 the sheer not giving a crap about how they do it and, and whether anybody will ever find them out. Um, anyway, that's me, I'm Brian of London. It's Sunday, it's sort of eve of the final holiday of Sukkot and we all get back to work. Let's see, if I take myself out of the picture, we'll get my little... Uh, no, there's not much I can do about the huge discrepancy in the light. There's my flag. I'm here in Israel, it's Brian of London. Catch you all next time.